the difference between a P-51 and a P-38, was it easy to transition in and you like that P-51 better as a fighter? Well, I hesitate to say that. I mean, yes, because of its ability to fight at altitude and its range, in a great range. Uh, the 38 was a far more complicated airplane because of the two engines, you know. But that's just, you know, uh, you learn that very quickly. So a 51 was just half the trouble. The 51 is much smaller, and it looks a lot like an ME-109. So in the 38, the, the Luftwaffe had no problem identifying you at great range because they said, oh, they're P-38. But when we were in the 51s, uh, one, they couldn't see us as far away, and two, there's always a little bit of a question of, uh, you know, who are you? A typical P-51 mission, you'd take off. How many hours would you fly to where you might get into an engagement, and how, how long would the round trip be? Okay, Berlin was uh, about 450, 500 miles from our base in England. So you're going at, uh, you know, takes you about two and a half hours to get there. And you get in a fight, two and a half hours to go home. So our average, well, I mean, if we went to France, obviously it's a shorter mission. But with the Mustang, we'd stay in longer anyway, see. So basically we were flying, uh, oh, roughly average about five hours. As I told you, my longest was seven hours and 20 minutes. But, Toward the end of the war, we'd leave the bombers, just leave a few guys up there uh, covering them, and then the rest of us would go down and, and strafe, mostly airfields, trains, trucks, barges, anything that moved. And we just ranged all over Germany. And these were never planned. We were never told to do that, but we did that. So uh, and it, it, that really, uh, my... Luftwaffe friends have told me that really <laughs> didn't please them at all when we did that. In World War II, uh, tell me, was there ever a time, I know every time you had an engagement, I mean, you chalked it up to experience, but was there ever a time when you look back on it and you think, I might have been a little complacent there and, boy, I was just uh, fortunate that I seen him when I did or so on? Anything stand out in your mind like that? No. I was never complacent. You couldn't afford to be complacent. I mean, no matter how long the missions were, you had to be alert the whole time. Otherwise, it's very easy to get killed. You don't want to do that. You know, it wasn't all tough. It wasn't all fighting. I mean, the pure joy of moving in that three-dimensional piece of sky. I mean, try to imagine... You've got a huge cumulonimbus here. And you dive right at the base of it and pull your nose up. You're going straight up. You hit afterburner. You go up the side of that cloud and, and roll over the top. And now above you is the blue. Right over your head is the, is the cloud as you go over. You come down the other side and you find holes. Go through and back up and over. I remember one occasion, there were two cloud decks with cumulus clouds going up through both decks, and we were in between these two cloud decks. It was like flying in a huge church with the columns going up. I'll never forget that as long as I live. And that's what you live for as a pilot, is that the joy, the freedom of, of flight. What a privilege. Yeah, it is. It's a tremendous privilege.